All right, let's learn how to play Protoss. This guide is updated for 2017 after several patches of Legacy of the Void. Uh, we're just going to start with the basics. This is for people who know what most of the units are, uh, know the general idea and the, uh, uh, I guess, objectives of StarCraft, but uh, might not know the specifics, especially not the more modern specifics uh, in Legacy of the Void. So a few things with Protoss that are different. Um, well, things to know. Protoss is pretty much based around pylons and warp gate. Pylons, uh, which you must almost always construct additional of, create a power field around them in which you can warp in units and create buildings. But in Legacy of the Void, they added super pylons. I'm not sure what the actual name is, but we're calling them super pylons, and we have for a while now. But super pylons are pylons that are close to a nexus or a warp gate. Not a gateway, but a warp gate. And at those pylons, you can warp in three times as fast. It's not the exact number, but it's essentially three times as fast. So super pylons are important to have for defense and for offense if you're trying to attack. Uh, and having those uh, improved power fields uh, is important to understand. Uh, on top of that, warp gate is a, a little bit different than the other races because it allows you to warp in units and power fields all around the map as well. Uh, but we'll get into it. We'll talk about it. Um, we'll, we'll go over the basics. And Protoss is the race most dependent on being in the right place at the right time. That's not luck, by the way. Um, but their units are more expensive, but they're usually stronger uh, than the units of Terran or Zerg. That's not always the case, but a lot of the time, uh, a Protoss unit has a lot more potential than like a single Marine or a single Zergling, even though, I mean, obviously it costs more and things like that. So... All right, we're up against a fellow Protoss, but the idea is we're going to be sticking with just a basic build to make sure that there is no real potential to do damage early. I don't, I don't. There are a couple different reasons for that. Maybe he's just trying to get in my head. Mind game. Don't let them, don't let them shake you. All right, no choking. Bye. Yeah. The first idea is to build pylons and kind of a defensive matrix around your nexus. Now, you don't just build three pylons right off the bat. Also, I, I neglected to mention pylon overcharge. The Mothership core can overcharge pylons for 50 energy. We'll see that soon enough. And uh, it, it serves as a super cannon for a limited time. And that's really important for defense. Uh, to have your mothership core in a different position than your army a lot of the time to make sure you can't be attacked at an angle where your army units are not, very simply. So, I'm going to get my gas geyser. We got the gateway right after the pylon. Got the pylon on 13, 14 supply. Uh, and getting the assimilator after that. And Protoss is the one race you do want those two gases right off the bat. Almost no matter what. You might not be mining from both of them. But you want the option because they have those stronger units, but it comes at a cost. Uh, and it's a pretty heavy one as well. So we're going to go into the gas geyser too. Looks like we got two gateways on this side. Uh, it's pretty customary in Protoss versus Protoss. And unlike uh, as Terran and Zerg, they, there's not really a one build fits all that well for Protoss. You do have to adjust whether you're playing against a Terran or a Zerg or a Protoss. And those differences, I'll just describe them now, but um, against a Protoss player, usually you want a more, more gateways early on to be able to get enough units to deal with Protoss units, which are very strong. Like, you can't just have half the amount of units. You'll die. Against Terran, usually you can get away with being greedier because their units are not as powerful. Against Zerg, usually you want to go for a wall-off near the front of the base or something like that instead of having no wall-off, so that way Zerglings and then anything else can't get in as time goes on. I'm just going to build a couple stalkers and then I'm going to work on my mothership core as well. While I build that triangle of pylons around my base. We're going in to take a look at what he wants to do. He's not building a mothership core. I'll show you what it looks like when you build a mothership core in just a moment. But as you can see, the Nexus does that. <laughs> Uh, you can see it spiraling up to build that mothership core, and I can get an idea. All right, he's building a mothership core. So that means he's maybe not going for so much tech on the other side of things. We can bring the probe home. We 
All right. So I'm going to take another Nexus here in a moment. I'm just sending the Stalkers out because they were chasing my probe, and I didn't much like that. I'm getting a robotics facility. It's it's probably the safest middle ground option, as in uh, I get detection, and I can also build strong ground units and immortals. And all these pylons are super pylons. You can see, well, the one at the back isn't. It's not in a pylon radius. But they're close enough to the Nexus that if I need to warp in. We'll see what's up here. He's got a mothership core, but he doesn't have much else. There's a Twilight Council as well. That's all I need to see. He's built two adepts. I'm not going to worry about microing too much here. Yeah, I could get a little bit of fancy micro. And in PvP, you do need to micro a little. But the focus should be, I'm going to get a Twilight Council. I'm going to get another gateway. And eventually... Now, there are some core units you can build. At the highest level, it's Blink Stalkers and Disruptors. And Disruptors, after you build a Robo Bay, you can build out of the Robotics Facility. They're very good. They fire a Purification Nova. They fire a Death Ball, essentially. That can one-shot pretty much all Gateway units. The problem is, if you miss your shot and it goes on cooldown, it's pretty much useless. Uh, so that is, that is the issue there. I'm just pressuring with these Stalkers. I don't expect to get any sort of real damage done. But I'm just poking up in case he gets greedy. I'm going to get a Forge as well to start my upgrades. So I'm going to work towards a more gateway-oriented strategy. He's got a lot of uh, Adepts here. And I'm doing a little bit of Stutter Step. Right-click, A-click, right-click, A-click. I can actually target fire there. It's important not to get too focused on trying to target fire because if you fuck it up and like you hit the wrong area and the unit is actually moved behind then uh, your units are not going to be attacking and that's I, I don't have to explain to you why your units not attacking is usually not a good idea I, I hope I wouldn't so uh, we're not going to go too much into detail on that point but yeah, we get into the main we see he has four gateways but I'm building all these uh, alternative. They can be a little bit fancy. Right click, A click. Just keep doing that. The Nexus is getting so low I can just kind of kill it. Even if he has... Oh, we're going to do some fancy micro. Activate fancy micro mode. And uh, I'm going to lose all these, but... For a Nexus, that's most definitely worth it. And now I have a Nexus, and he doesn't, which I did the math. I have twice as many Nexi. All right. So uh, we did it, America. I just killed his Observer there with my Observer. I observed his Observer, and then I observed it dying at my hand. So everything as planned. Now we'll spread some pylons out on the edge of the base. Because I need more pylons, but you don't want to just make pylons. Like, making four pylons right here isn't going to do anything for me. So you want to have them spread out. You want to have options as time goes on. Let's get the charge upgrade. Why not throw that in? Alright. I'm going to build up. No, we're not going to get another immortal. I'm going to get a warp prism so I can support my attack and I can warp in on the other side of the map. That is the plan. And we'll start getting some zealots. The charge upgrade is on the way. I could get another base, but right now I'm still up two bases to one. So I'm not particularly concerned. He's making stalkers and immortals. I'm making stalkers and immortals, and I have a second base. So that's very suspicious. Wow, why is he over there? Okay. I'm going to hotkey the Warp Prism. I have my army on one, like all the things I want moving on the ground. I have my Mothership Core on that, two hotkey. I have a Warp Prism on three. I have my Nexi on four. My Robotics Facility is on five. And my Warp Gates are on the default hotkey of W. So if I want to warp in, I hit that three button. I press E for phasing mode. I hit W, shift click, and then get supply block so I can only warp in two Stalkers. But you get the idea, you noob. And remember, well, 
At this point, I have too many probes to make this base very efficient. We should be looking at another one. But we're going to move up to attack. Get a Twilight Council. Get a little bit of everything. Get cannons in the mineral line. Stuff like that. Eh, I have a lot of gas. We'll warp in sentries. They're not particularly great, but they're not particularly bad. There's a Nexus. Those force fields might have actually hurt me more than they helped me, but... Guardian Shield allows me to reduce the range damage of everything in the shield pretty significantly. So Guardian Shield should always be used when they have ranged units. Especially, It's especially good against Terran, but it's also very good against Protoss as well. Because a lot of their units are ranged, obviously, right? So. Yeah, let's see if we can go up this ramp. I do have Blink. I don't think he's going to make it. Oh, yeah, the Guardian Shield is a big part. And why, why it's important, even if you don't really need Force Field, having a few sentries is a big part of your army as well. But that kind of just came down to building my units more quickly. We've finally done it. I've always, I've always wanted to move up. I'm no longer a Bronze League hero. But uh, just building my units at a reasonable time. That guy has obviously watched some winter guides before. As you could see, he, he made a reasonable amount of units at a reasonable time, but he didn't quite keep up on it. So, But yeah. The two gate is kind of a just versus Protoss. You can use it at, against the other races, but the two gate, uh, usually against the other races, you want to focus more on building up your tech and your army rather than trying to go across the map and do damage, uh, just because of the nature of the match. But it's important to think about those pylon placements. Think about what buildings you want to make and building them as quickly as you can. Like, you don't want to just sit around with 500, 500, 500 minerals, 500 gas, and say, I wonder what I should do. No matter what it is, you need to build it as soon as possible. And a lot of players, like, they might be microing one adept on the other side of the map. Like, I can kill two more SCVs if I really micro this. You know what you just did? You didn't build four probes in the time it would have taken to finish that off. Like, you could have built four probes in the time you were microing that adept, but guess what? You weren't, because you weren't microing your macro. Got a micro your mech. Additional pylons required. All right, he's a Terran. So I'm gonna get my gateway up. I'm still gonna put the pylons in the triangle formation. That's not much of a triangle, anyways. Illuminati. Um, around my base to defend. Because against Terran, walling off against Terran might seem like a good idea, but then you think, every Terran unit is ranged. So if you wall off, it's just as likely, if not more likely, they will use the wall against you than they will actually uh, be, be prevented from doing anything with it. It'll actually hurt you more than help you in most scenarios. So it's more important to protect your mineral line and your probes and your income than it is to protect your wall. Now that's an engineering bay. So, uh, you know what an engineering bay doesn't do? It doesn't build units. I will tell you that much. Uh, so he's created a wall this early with an engineering bay, the simple version. Now, this is a bad build from Terran. Even if he wants to go for a planetary fortress rush, it's still a bad build. But, uh, so we're going to focus on just building up a strong basic army. I'm going to build Colossi. Blink Stalkers and Upgraded Gateway Units, just in general. And that's the focus here. So I'm going to try to get everything up in a timely manner without being vulnerable. So that really starts with, early on, getting a Mothership Core. I'm going to check if he's got a planetary. Like, if he's going to build a goddamn planetary fortress in my base, so he's going to build it over here. Okay. He's not building a plan. I'm just kind of... Anyways, just ignore it. He doesn't matter anymore. He's gone. We're ignoring the opponent. <laughs> He does have a marine, so uh, 
Probius makes it out. Not even close, baby. Right, and I'm taking this Nexus. Now, this map is a little bit different. Uh, you have two options of bases, and this is something, uh, something to factor in. The back base, the more safe base, the base that is kind of your pocket, you go down a ramp from your own main to get to it, uh, has more mineral patches. As you can see, it has 10 mineral patches, uh, and the number is showing up here. But it only has one gas geyser. And as a Protoss player, usually you want more gas geysers because you want to go for that tech, and that tech costs best being gas, simply enough. Uh, the other races don't need their gas as much, so a lot of players will go for a base like that just because it's safe. I'm going for it because I don't feel like I particularly need I don't feel like I need to be greedy. But I gotta acknowledge, I can't build as many high-tech units as I might like. This is an awkward exchange here. Probe meets SCV. SCV meets Probe. SCV falls in love. SCV dies to Glaives. Uh, it sounds like a George R. R. Martin story. But the objective, I'm going to get an observer now, and then we can observe whatever tomfoolery is happening in his base. I'm going to get a robotics bay quite early on, because once again, the focus is not on trying to kill him, it's on trying to stay safe. And that's what we're going to do. So getting up to those colossi, having observers just for basic vision, I'm going to get two observers, one to go across the map. And one to stay at home, so don't die to widow mines or other general bullshit. New technology research. Well, we will see. And I'll just keep it. We'll put it right over here. We can see what's going on up there. I've got a forge on the way as well. I want to start a sentry. Because I want to have, once again, that guardian shield. That's so important. I, I did not expect this, but, like, we'll slap down the overcharge. We'll slap another overcharge. Looks like I don't fear the Reaper. He has a lot of barracks in his main base, but Reapers are just... So this obviously is not going to be a very aggressive Terran player. So once again, we're going to focus on building up. Taking my third base by six minutes is always very nice. And I see right now, I don't need to worry about him anymore. It's all about me. It's time for me time. Okay. So I don't need to worry about anything he's doing. He's building a bunch of barracks. We're not worried about him. And that's the most important thing. you got to worry about yourself. Um, you can laugh at him all you want. You can be like, Aha, you are in the position I was months ago when I was but a noob. But now you are the noob. Therefore, I am better than you. And I feel superior to someone on the internet. And that's the real... No! It's about making sure I get that third base up in a timely manner. Continually producing probes. Working towards my Twilight Council. Making sure I'm not too late on additional gateways. And then I can work up towards Templar Tech. We're getting ahead of ourselves. But Colossi, Blink Stalkers, and in general, 200 supply is going to be very helpful in dealing with this. Alright. The Colossi step forward. The Colossi with their extended thermal lance. So, uh, hey girl, are you a robotics bay? Be because you make my thermal lance extend. Which is important to do as soon as possible once you get Colossi, otherwise they're kind of just sitting there with their normal sized lances and everybody laughs at them. So, uh, 
get that thermal. If you're going to go for Colossi, that is an incredibly important upgrade. Because Colossi have almost no HP. They're very fragile. And I'm adding on those additional gateways, which should usually be happening as you're getting your third base up, so you can actually use the economy and not bank up too much money. Who knows what he's doing? Who cares? I'm not worried. I can take a gold base. I can work up in upgrades, get a second forge. We got more gates. We got everything we need. He might eventually move out. Oh, he's got a Mecha Viking. The newest skin. Oh, yeah, I have the skins. I didn't activate them, though. Anyways, we'll get to the Mecha Viking. All right. I do have Blink. We'll get Charge. Upgrades. Got another Forge. There's really, like, even if he had, we'll check. We'll make sure he doesn't have random bases in the corners. I'm splitting off units with the Shift Click Off. We'll just make sure. I don't think he does, but I can't 100% rule out he doesn't have a bunch of random base. Oh yeah, we're making sure to check every little nook and particular cranny. And I've now got four Colossi. At some point, I can just kind of... Well, hello there. This is awkward. Be fancy. As the me Those Vikings are so cool. I love that new skin. Might not be new when you guys are watching this, but it's new now, and I'm very excited. Well, we made it, America. Just making sure I have coverage. I like the Viking escort there, making sure the uh, supply drop makes it to its location. Of course, it didn't help out too much. I thought that was caught for a second. I don't know. But from this point, nearly maxed out. This was mostly just an exercise and taking additional bases and making sure I have everything going on that I need to have going on. But this, the idea is to build up an army that in the majority of scenarios you can simply A-move across the map. And in this scenario, I'm going to simply A-move across the map. And we're just going to go ahead. Now, you should still be macroing, adding upgrades at home, but it's a matter of principle right now. Most players you don't want to attack into. Like, I could go carriers, I could get like six more bases... But I've built up my third bases. I scouted early enough to realize he didn't really pose an offensive threat. So I worked my way up from there. Uh, so now we've found ourselves in a location where he has a lot of defenses. But I have a lot of these units that are just going to walk through. And I mean, even if he has some siege tanks, he'll eventually defend. But it's a long process. It is a long process. So. I'm not sure what those guys are doing. You guys are just sad. Why are you over here? Idiots. Oh, yeah. Moving on. And I can warp in another round. This Colossi, I could have made another Robo. But it all comes down to expanding in a timely manner and realizing... When your opponent can and cannot attack you. It doesn't matter that much when they can and cannot. But, like, you need to know if they're going to go for seven barracks on one base or if they're going to take an expansion. We're not talking about the details of did they go for the 2-1-1 one, one, or are they going to add the plus one upgrade timing? Who gives a shit? That doesn't matter. Worry about you. But you got to worry about whether they can attack you with a huge amount of units before you get your tech up. But the basic check marks are, does he have a bunch of production facilities on one base, or does he have nothing in his base, in which case he might be proxying me? Those are the uh, simple question. If the answer is, one, he doesn't have many production facilities, then you're free to go about your business. If he doesn't have uh, any, then you should probably prepare for attack. 
And if he's expanding, well, then you can say, well, let me just build up more shit. Uh, and that's that's the key to StarCraft. As you build more shit than your opponent, you usually win. 35,000 games, I've worked that out. All right. All right, one more, one more. And you can kind of have your own flavor to it. If you like going for High Templar for Storm, if you're into that, you can do that. If you like going Sky Toss to make a, a bunch of carriers and void rays, I'm sure you can make a lot of people very angry um, and say it's imbalanced uh, or something like that. But uh, it's up to you. But just recognizing whether you're going to die and then just making sure your buildings and your tech come up in a reasonable timing uh, in the right place. That's it. That's it. Quantity insufficient. So, against Terran, this is one of the longer maps, but we're not really factoring in that much, but Terran is the race you're usually least worried about early. Usually, not always. Um, but if they don't go for some sort of proxy, they don't go so for... Proxy, if you haven't uh, heard it before, proxy means proximity, pretty much. Uh, that means you build a building close to your opponent's base, so that way it can, one, not be as likely to be scouted, two, hit quicker than they might expect. Like a proxy stargate, um, or a proxy barracks, or a, a proxy gateway, things like that, uh, or proxy hatchery. Are, are not common, I would say, but they happen. And it's not, like, infrequent. It's not like one in a hundred games. It's like one in five or eight. Uh, especially at the lower level. So, we're gonna look in. We'll see two barracks. And he has a gas geyser as well. So, what this will mean, I still want to expand. Just because I see two barracks doesn't mean, oh my god, fucking stop everything. We need cannons. We need cannons. Stat. And while cannons at the lower levels might save you, from direct attacks on players who don't understand how to beat them. Uh, and I see that a lot as well, by the way. Um, a lot of players just, like, go gateway into forge and then just make random cannons. Cannons might seem good, but once you start dealing with players who will not die to the cannons or, or will go around the cannons, well, then you're not really prepared to build your tech up. You're not really prepared to do what a Protoss should be doing, which is relying on their tech early on. Uh, so, that's the key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Cyber Core up. We're going to get an Adept. He's just rallying Marines across, it seems. So we'll get a Mothership Core. I'm actually going to get another... I don't usually do this, but we'll get another Gateway. And Chrono Boost this out. The Adept should be okay. It does look like he's just intent on making Marines walk across the map. I'm not sure how he made it by. I'm not. Who knows what happened there. But the the probe walked in, and it saw he was making a factory. So that is very likely to be his first factory. Uh, which means he doesn't have the option to do anything but a frontal attack. So if he just has barracks, then probes, pylons, and defense. And then we'll work our way, and believe it or not, we're going to go Robo into Robo Bay into Colossi and Blink Stalkers. But uh, we're still a little bit out from that. It doesn't really matter exactly how we get there as long as we have a plan in mind. you got to have a destination. All right, StarCraft is not about the journey, though I implore you not to stop believing. But if you have no direction, it's, a, it's not like a romantic getaway. You don't just wander around hoping you'll enjoy yourselves in some sort of, uh, I don't know, aesthetically pleasing manner. No, that's not how, this is war. Okay, so have a plan. Must construct additional pylon research. All right. So I've just kind of made five adepts here. I mean, I already had all everything in place. Just having just building out of one gateway. You saw I building out of one and then maybe a second gateway 
and not only did I shut down any sort of weak early pressure he was doing, but now I have enough to counter attack. And I'm gonna send him out. I'm gonna I'm gonna see what's up. It looks like they're doing okay. So we'll just kinda do that. But this is not the main event. The main event is over here. Where we're getting more pylons. I'll add another one in the front. Remember, you don't want useless pylons. There's no make a pylon in the back of the mineral line at the edge of the base. These are all useful places. All right. And he doesn't have a wall, so I can kind of just shade him. But this is scouting what was. He did an early pressure. He didn't do a great early pressure, but he did an early pressure, and you'll see that a lot. Um, but here, I just simply built enough units. I, I didn't get supply blocked. I continued making probes. I didn't panic. I didn't throw down cannons. I just made a few extra units, and uh, now we find ourselves kind of gutting the main base. Which is not exactly how I wanted to end this, but I mean, it's a good example of how just sticking with your guns, you don't need to adapt to your opponent. Because your opponent knows less than you do. Because you're watching this guide, okay? You're watching this guide. You already know more than your opponent. So, you stick with your guns, you stick with your plan, and the vast majority of the time it will carry you through. You can't get supply blocks, you gotta keep making probes, you gotta keep getting upgrades, you gotta get your gateways in a timely manner, you gotta keep warping in, but if you do all of that, which it sounds like a lot, but it's really not, then every player, and I know a lot of players feel this, I keep stressing, like, I'm not even talking about, like, the strategy now, I'm talking about mentality. Because that's so important. I I'm gonna turn that off. By the way, thank you for that. Um, but I think it actually is a question. So, uh, what what build would you recommend for Protoss to macro everything else? This build, this build, right here. Just gate expand into Colossi and Blinkstalker against Protoss. Uh, against Protoss, you go two gates and then you expand. Against Zerg, you wall off, and you might want to go for a few Immortals first, but. Don't be like, well, Colossi are no good against, uh, against Zerg. They're plenty good against Zerg if the Zerg player has 30 drones and hasn't figured out how to build anything but roaches. They're plenty fine. All right. It's not no, so much about what you're building. It's about how quickly and how many you're building of it. So. And so many players get caught up in what counters what. What the fuck this tech tree here. Let's get out my strategy guide. No. It's really about... It's not Hearthstone, okay? It's not about who has the better cards in their deck. It's about who shuffles their deck the... F that doesn't make sense. But it... We're done with the Hearthstone metaphors. There's no chance. This is not left up to chance, okay? It's the opposite of that. I didn't have a good joke for that, okay? But, uh... It's just about being faster and just making very basic. You don't need to make a decision on... Should I go for the Rubble Baby for after the Mothership Corp? Make the fucking Mothership Corp. Uh, you don't need to be making the hard decisions. You just gotta make the simple ones. Like, is he going to kill me with a bunch of SCVs because he proxied five barracks? If so, maybe this time I should not make so many pros. But otherwise... But now, I've kind of just... I'm at... 65 probes. I'm looking at that top right, by the way. If you haven't yet, figure that one out. Uh, if you hover over the top right, if you hover over your supply, you can see your worker and your army supply. Uh, right up there. More stalkers. I actually don't have a Twilight Council. That should have already been here, but... It's really about playing more games. These guides are good for general direction. And I think any... Especially for people who don't have the time to play more than 10 or 15 games a day. Any guides that are like, well, this is the step-by-step -step guide to becoming the best StarCraft player. I mean, they'll get you pretty far. But I've never... I'm speaking from... I, I can only work off my own experience. And uh, my own experience is grinding out a lot of games and then taking the best of them and ignoring the worst. So you don't have to. But uh, I, I never really was like, all right, so the best build order to become a master Zerg player is 13 pool, 15 hatch, 16 gas, pull off of gas, send in overload. 
It's not about the details, it's about the big picture, all right? StarCraft is a blank canvas. Uh, it's up to you to paint something beautiful. Also, he has Banshees, so we do need detection, but uh, I'll figure that out soon enough. And by beautiful, I mean at least that doesn't look too shitty. But just isn't really that hard. It's very intimidating. Now, you might be looking at this like, I don't play in the Silver League or the Bronze League. I don't play players this bad. Yes, you absolutely do. You're one of them. All it takes is recognizing that and accepting that and moving forward. So uh, I think we've uh, worked through this here. The Stalkers have made it up. He does not have an expand at this point. But just simply throwing units at him has eventually proven successful. My own. So, the basics of Protoss, once again, are getting an expansion up as quickly as possible. A lot of Protoss players are scared to expand, but with Pylon Overcharge, you actually need to expand very quickly as a Protoss. I mean, not the lowest level, but like, you need to have a focus on getting your expansion down. Uh, because you build probes very quickly, um, as well as you don't have the ability to get a lot of the strong tech units that Protoss players really rely on uh, if you don't expand. But really the focus is on making sure you don't die to a one base. So you send that probe out at the one minute mark, you see if they're going to kill you. And you should be able to recognize the signs of someone killing you. Examples, they don't have any buildings in their base, which means they're building them by your base. Uh, or they have a bunch of buildings in their base, like five barracks or four gateways or a forge. Uh, or a spawning pool and a bunch of zerglings, things like that. Well, then you have to adapt. Otherwise, probes, pylons, get your tech out as quickly as possible. Make sure you have that mothership core on a separate hotkey. And then keep A-moving your way to victory and getting gold leaguers to complain from here to Korea. All right. So hopefully this was at least a little bit helpful. Hopefully you have a little bit more direction. Uh, that's all I'm really looking for. That's all I hope to do. But thank you for watching.